The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. We are three days till Christmas. My favorite time of the year. It's also three days till my birthday. Uh, by the way. Nice. No big deal. Very nice. Um, today, we're kind of going to skip some college sports. Um, college basketball still, they haven't played a lot of uh, games recently and they haven't played many meaningful games. Those will start right after the new year, basically. And then next week is basically our big college football bowl preview show. So we're not going to talk about any uh, transfers or any of that. There's there's a few little things here and there, but um, we'll just save that for a big uh, college football show next week. So this week we're going to get back to some pro sports. We're going to talk NBA. We got to talk about the Lions, actually. and Some uh, good Lions news. Yeah, we'll have to uh, get our... NFL picks, but we will be able to dive a little deeper into some of these teams because the NFL season is starting to wind down, starting to get closer to the playoffs, and uh, things are happening. So I wanted to start with the NBA. They are the, I would say they're the main Christmas attraction, at least for me. Um, There are NFL games on Christmas this year, which is kind of cool. The unfortunate part is the NFL games are Green Bay and Cleveland. Hate that matchup. And then Indy and Arizona, which is okay. But they're not teams that I'm That should super, be a pretty good game. Yeah, that should yeah. be a good one, but they're just not teams that I'm super interested in. Um, so anyway, Christmas Day games for the NBA. Um, yeah, starting off with uh, two teams people have more higher higher hopes in. They've yeah. been not – no, don't even sugarcoat it. They've just been disappointments so well, Wait a minute, the season. Knicks just beat the Pistons. They've both been big disappointments so far this season. <laughs> yeah, Hawks and the Knicks will start us out uh, at noon right away. Uh, two teams, like you said, they're they're in these weird spots. And obviously they're both very talented. We both playoff teams from a year ago. And right- well, I, I'd say the Knicks are very talented. I mean, the, the Hawks. Yeah. The Knicks have some problems in that department. Yeah, the Knicks have had some health and you know, COVID issues lately. But both teams are actually outside of the playoff look right now. Again, we're still not even really halfway through the season, but it's still something to note that they're going to, they're putting themselves in a hole at the moment. Um, But yeah, I, I think it's been kind of weird for the Hawks that they just haven't really gotten anything going because Trey Young is still playing solid overall. He's really gotten it going the past two weeks. He's He's playing like the, High level all star, yeah, that people expected from the beginning. Yeah, I, I think their biggest problem is like what we saw last year was they have like this crazy good depth, and it just hasn't necessarily come together. But also like they just they're not very good defensively, and they give up a lot of points to a lot of teams. So they're always in these shootouts, and in the NBA, it, it's hard to win shootouts every night. Um. Sometimes you got to get it done defensively, and they just they haven't done it. Like they gave up 133 to the Nuggets, they gave up 132 to the Rockets, they gave up 130 to the Hornets, and they're right in these games. Like most of these games, they are right there, but they are just coming up short, um, except for the Nuggets game uh, just the other day. But yeah, Hawks kind of underperforming, um, but I assume that they will figure things out and uh, hopefully get get rolling. The Knicks, on the other hand, they're always in these games because of their defensive play style, but they've just been inconsistent. And they I think, they play the exact same way every game. Yeah, Their starters get to a point where they're not good enough anymore, and the bench has to come in and save the game. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were hoping that this Knicks team would be able to 
get some more scoring after they signed like Evan Fournier in the off season. Um, and that's like really what they were missing last season. And it just hasn't really come together yet. And I think that's what they're still trying to figure out. And as good as Julius Randle is playing, he's still not actually playing as good as he was last season. I think he's, he's taking a bit of a dip yes. and people are kind of afraid that he might've been a one year wonder. Yeah. He's still playing good. He's just been a lot less efficient in things um, and not getting quite the numbers that he was last year. So that will start us off on Christmas. Um, two Eastern Conference teams that are kind of in a weird spot, and they need to start turning their season around pretty quickly. Yeah. I, the biggest draw for this is Trey Young back in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And honestly, with most Christmas games, I think you should just throw out the records – because they they put these matchups together for the superstars right. and the players involved in the storylines. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest part of this game. I'm excited to see Trey Young back in Madison Square Garden. Him egging on the fans every time he hits a shot. The the fans going back at him whenever the Knicks get a lead. It is going to be really exciting to watch. But like you said, more of the Hawks. I'm 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 looking for them to get back on track with their defense and their chemistry on offense too. Yeah. Because I want, I want them to be back in that playoff picture because they were the most surprising and like out of nowhere, exciting team in the playoffs. Right. Trey young was just going crazy on everybody. John Collins was emerging. Bogdanovich was hitting big shots. Kevin Herter was stepping up. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody was stepping up and doing their jobs. The Knicks on the other hand, they, they just, they don't excite me. Like, I, I like watching their younger players, like their first and second year guys, more than the veterans. Like, you know what you're going to get out of Julius Randle at this point, and it's mostly going to be inconsistency. Kimball Walker was out of the lineup for, like, the past three weeks, and now he's back in it. Yeah. Evan Fournier, even even though over the past few years, to me, he's been one of the most underrated players in the league, he put up really impressive numbers in Orlando, mainly because it was Orlando. Mm-hmm. He's really like a like 16, 17 point per game guy that has really hot streaks and really cold streaks. And you can't rely on those. It's just inconsistent all around. Mm-hmm. Like D. Rose is the one veteran that comes in and always does his job. Besides that, R.J. Barrett, he's taking a dip again. The rookies are interesting. Like Quentin Grimes, um, Deuce, uh, I forgot his last name, the kid from West Virginia. I yeah, know. I forgot his last name, but Mitchell Robinson, all those young guys, they come in and they give you a spark. Second year, Emmanuel Quickly. He's been good. Exactly. Plus Obi Toppin. Didn't even bring him up yet. So I'm excited to see what they do in a game like this on Christmas Day with everybody watching. So yeah. it should be interesting. Right. Yeah. The Knicks are still a young, fun team to watch. It's just they've been, I don't know, trying to figure things out. One question before we move on. A lot of people think Tom Thibodeau, they accuse him of, like, grinding up his teams over, like, a few years, Mm -hmm. and eventually they just fall apart. Or, like, they can't keep up the level of defense he expects. And he, like, he has them play too hard during the regular season. Do you think that might be, even though he's only been there for one year. Right. Do you think that might be a part of what the decline is, or that you just can't rely on the guys you paid? Uh. No, I don't think it's I don't think it's Tibbs. I think it's more of just a chemistry issue. I think they're still trying to figure it out because, like I said, like they're a really young team. And again, I think we saw it last year. As good as and as much as I like Julius Randle as a player, I don't know if he can be that number one option for a, for a team to win a championship at least. Uh, so I think either somebody needs to step up a lot, and they need to be like a super deep team, um, similar to the Hawks, or they need to just get somebody else. Like they need to make maybe a move before the trade deadline. I'm not sure because they have a lot of young pieces, a lot of young assets that they could get away with moving on from some of them while still being able to maintain a few others. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but I, I think it's more of a chemistry and player issue than a coaching thing. Yeah, I heard a rumor recently that they could go for De'Aaron Fox around the deadline. That would be and, a big splash. Yeah, before the season, I. Do you remember I was saying I, I hope they would go for Colin Sexton? Mm-hmm. And that didn't happen. Yeah. They could still have a chance if they went for De'Aaron. Yeah, and De'Aaron Fox is not having the greatest season. so He needs a new 
He needs a new spot, yeah. most likely. The following game, Celtics and the Bucks. Celtics are another weird team, and that seems to be the uh, thing of the NBA this season. Celtics are finally getting healthy. They got Jalen Brown back uh, a week or so ago. Jason Tatum's still doing his thing. But they're in a weird spot, too. Like, they're 15 and 16. They're similar to the Hawks and the Knicks, where they should be better than they are. And now they're talking about moving on from Dennis Schroeder, who's actually played pretty decent um, for them. Uh, but they, they're looking to make a move. I don't know. I, I think it's a, a, a situation similar to almost like what we've seen Michigan and Michigan State in college, where it's like you have two talented players in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Who's that third guy? I think some people actually thought it was Marcus Smart. I don't know why ever anybody ever had faith in Marcus Smart, but they did. <laughs> he is a like he he's the energy guy. Exactly. He's the glue to the team on defense. I was gonna say he's a perfect glue guy. And they allow him to shoot like six threes a game. Yeah. For some reason. Yep. Yeah. And then the Bucks. I, I mean, the Bucks are the Bucks at this point. You know, when what they're fully healthy, you know what you're getting. Yeah. Exactly. And. They're still waiting on Dante DiVincenzo, who I think is actually going to give them a little bit of a boost when they come back. But we've already seen that like guys like Grayson Allen can step up for this team. Yeah. Um, Bobby Portis, he's been doing it since they signed him last year. That There are guys that can step into roles and fill in pretty nicely. We're seeing DeMarcus Cousins get some time. He's actually playing not too bad. Yeah. The Brooke Lopez factor is still a concern, but it's really good that they signed Boogie. Yeah, so I mean, the Bucks are kind of that boring team, I guess. I hate to say it because Giannis is actually such a exciting player to watch, but the Bucks are just kind of there, and they're gonna win games, and they'll be there in the end, I think. So we'll have to wait and see. But I, I don't know if there's too many exciting storylines in this game necessarily, besides being able to watch the talent level of Giannis, Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown, Chris Middleton. Um, but the Celtics would need this win more than the Bucks need this win. Then we yeah. have, I think, for me personally, this is the most exciting game of the game of the day. The middle of the day. Warriors and the Suns. Two top teams in the NBA. Warriors with Steph. Steph's electrifying. Super fun to watch. Devin Booker, when he's on, is insane. Um, and these are two teams that you can expect to see possibly in the Western Conference Finals. Um, Steph just broke the record for threes of all time, like we talked about last week. And I think now that he's got that monkey off his back, I think he's ready to play better. I think I think that was kind of hindering him for a while. And I think Devin Booker and uh, Chris Paul – and the Suns want to always be able to beat up on the Warriors. So that one should be good. Any thoughts on that one? Well, this is going to be the third time playing in the past month, I believe. Yeah. yeah. First time, Suns won. Second time, the Warriors. Was it the second time the Warriors broke their win streak? Uh, I think it's – I thought it was the uh, Yeah, I can't, remember, I can't remember which, one, which way it went. I'll look real quick. But – yeah, this this should be one yeah, of the best Warriors, games. Yeah, Warriors Warriors lost a lot or won the last matchup. Okay, so the Suns beat them the first time around. Yeah, the Warriors they're they're just they're playing some of the best basketball in the league, mm -hmm. probably the best. Their ball movement has been fantastic. Everybody's fitting in perfectly on both ends of the floor. They won't have Clay back until January. That's the new report until like mm -hmm. the first or second week of January. I still don't know how James Wiseman fits into what this team is doing. Yeah. But it will be interesting to watch. And like you said, Phoenix, they're they're almost the same team they were in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can depend on like players. The rotation is like eight, nine deep. And you can depend on everybody that comes in the game. Yep. Should be a really good game. Not much to say about it, really, because yeah, yeah every, this is the these are the two teams, like you said, everybody's expecting to be in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, I'm should be a good one. The one thing I am interested in is if they will, um, give Kaminga some more time, 
uh, on the team. We saw him. He was in the G League at some points, and um, he's kind of been in and out. But I would like to see him get a little bit more run in some of these games and see what they got in him because there's a lot of talk, again, about you know packaging all these young guys to make one big splash to make another run for a championship. Um, but I'm almost just as interested to see what those young guys could do um, on the court before they even decide to make any of those moves. Okay. Then everybody's favorite matchup for all the non-basketball fans. <laughs> 8 o'clock, Nets and the Lakers. Um, Lakers are sitting at 16 and 16, and I love it. And they're going to be without AD, I believe, for... Didn't they say at least like three or four weeks? Yeah, the recent... injury happened, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Some recent future. I don't know. I can't find out. I've done bad research. But he'll be out. Of, I'm pretty sure it's a couple weeks, like you said. Uh, so the Lakers are now back to... Now it's not Russ and AD without LeBron. Now it's Russ and LeBron without AD. They just can't all be on the floor at the same time, it seems like, lately. Um... I just think the Lakers are in trouble are in trouble, to be honest. I and I love every second of it, unfortunately. But I just think that they're gonna struggle so many times. And they be again, part of it I guess is because they they can't stay healthy, but when they can't stay healthy, they can't figure out that chemistry uh to get those three stars that they have to mesh well together. And I don't know what it is, but they just don't they don't look that good well i i think deep down you really do know and everybody kind of predicted it before yeah. the season once they decided they were signing russ outside of russ fans who we know are mostly delusional none of us thought it was going to be a great fit yeah and yes in the past month the russ has had his really good games and he's figured out ways to get a few wins with this team. Mm -hmm. But it's still a problem that LeBron should have the ball in his hands as the primary ball handler and decision maker. Mm -hmm. But the only way Russ can be good is if he controls everything. And I don't think Frank Vogel is a – Frank Vogel is a good coach for certain types of teams. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's a he's the guy that's going to figure out how to mesh LeBron and Russ and AD in this type of situation. Right. Because they're obviously all talented enough to get wins and they have, but you also see like the game at Minnesota when AD was getting bullied by Cat. Yeah. His energy was barely there. LeBron was missing shots and he was like on and off on defense. Mm -hmm. And then Russ is doing Russ. First of all, when Russ is doing Russ, I don't know how LeBron and AD can have can be as good as they're supposed to. Right. That's the one element alone. But then when AD is being soft and he's barely in the game mentally, then he gets hurt. It's just it's so much going against them right now. A lot of it is their fault. Some of it isn't, like the AD injury. Yeah. But they still haven't gotten Kendrick Nunn back. He's going to be a key player on the team. All the veterans they play, they're going to have to cut them down once they get near the playoffs because I don't think a lot of them will be the most dependable right. in these types of series. They're just they're not, they're not good enough, like you said. Yeah. They're just not good enough. And then on the other side, the Nets are having a lot of COVID issues right now. And they're still winning. Yeah. But they had uh, their game on Tuesday or something or Monday get postponed, and now their game – um, I think they play tomorrow is also going to be canceled uh, or postponed. So Saturday will be the deciding factor of when they're possibly coming back. Um, so I'm not sure what they're going to look like, um, whether or not these players can clear protocols or if they can field a team. <laughs> Who knows? I guess there's talk about shifting some of the Christmas game times um, if they had to. I, but I don't know. Um, the interesting thing, I guess, is that 
Kevin Durant is playing out of his mind this season uh, because James Harden's been kind of in and out uh, all season long. And now the, uh, the funniest thing, I think, and I think it's kind of the funniest thing in the NBA right now, because of all these COVID things that are happening in the NBA, the Nets are deciding that they will allow Kyrie Irving to play in road games. Now, we just talked about the chemistry issues for the Lakers. I can't imagine playing one of the most, I'm going to use the word eclectic people in the NBA, in Kyrie Irving, to only have him on road games. Do you have any thoughts on that? Honestly, you just have to depend on the fact that he's one of the greatest hoopers of all time. That's literally what you have to depend on because he is. And when you put him in a game, he's going to get buckets and most people can't stop him. Mm -hmm. How he'll work into the, what they're doing right now. Yeah. Question marks all over the place. Right. Whether or not he'll be there for the full season, more question marks, Mm -hmm. but there's one guarantee when you throw him in the game and you give him the ball, he's going to make magic. Yeah, He'll put the ball in the hoop, and he's going to make people look silly. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, with the several different changing lineups, throwing in the young guys, everything all over the place, it could be a problem in some aspects. Yeah. But I think there are, most pl- there are a lot of players that you wouldn't take this chance on, and Kyrie is the one that you would. Because he's just that good when you put him in the game. Mm -hmm. And with Kevin Durant there, it shouldn't be a major, major problem. Right. Because he has no problem playing with KD. Yeah. At least that's what we think. And I think I'm really curious of, like, can Kyrie play on Christmas? Bless you. Thank you. I haven't, like... I haven't looked into any articles like if Kyrie Irving would be available for the Christmas Day game. Now I I don't know. Thought about it honestly. The other thing that I think about too is that like with the game being in LA, does LA have the same mandates of like I I don't know how any of it works. I guess I I guess that's the most interesting thing for me. But. It, it'll depend on all their COVID issues because I think basically everyone on the team is in protocol right now. So I guess we'll just <laughs> kind of have to wait and see, which is somewhat funny, but somewhat not funny at the same time, of course. Um, and then finally, our late night game, the one that people usually aren't interested in, but should still be a good game. Mavericks playing the Jazz. It was breaking news today that Luke is in COVID-19 protocols. So not surprised. Yeah. So, yeah, the NBA having their issues, um, similar to a lot of our other pro sports, we decided to not talk about it necessarily just because it's, honestly, it's kind of depressing. But uh, so many teams are having struggles with the COVID issues, so it's kind of a wait and see right now. But the Mavericks have started to look a little bit better as of recently. Granted, Utah is one of the best teams in the NBA, they're always the team that flies under the radar. But the Mavericks are starting to look like maybe they'll get things together. Um, and I think a lot of it is just Jalen Brunson has played so good for this team. Yeah. And he has been one of their better players to just kind of pick up the slack whenever they need somebody to score and be that guy off the bench. Um, because we know, like, there's Luka and Kristaps, but... Tim Hardaway Jr. is kind of inconsistent sometimes, and then other than that, they don't have they don't have a ton of offense. It's just not a strong roster. Honestly, yeah. it's not very strong. Right? They they go about like six or seven deep of good enough players, and then it's just like who knows after that. Right. And then of course the Jazz, like I said, one of the better teams in the West. Um, They've been incorporating Rudy Gay lately. Yeah. As a small ball five. Which he's the guy that I is forgot wild. is on that team. Yeah. Similar to uh, Dallas. I forgot that Dallas had Frank Neal on their team. 
Um, but yeah, the Jazz are actually like a very deep team. Of course, they also have Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench, one of the best bench players. Um, they got two of the best hot six men in the league, him and Joe Ingles. Yeah. Yep. And then, of course, you got Donovan Mitchell leading down the charge. Rudy Gobert, the defensive stopper. Mike Conley, who's he's, he's been pretty solid. Uh, he's had a couple of breakout games. I mean, he's not kind of, he's not like he once was on the Grizzlies. He doesn't have to take over games or try to do too much. So he's kind of more of a facilitator, but he's kind of filled the job, filled that role nicely. And uh, yeah, the uh, Jazz are just one of those teams that you want, don't want to see on any, uh, any day because they're just going to grind it out with anybody. Those are the Christmas games. Pretty uh, exciting matchups for the most part. Like I said, unfortunately, the big part is can teams get around the COVID protocols and see what happens. We did see the Bulls who were in COVID last week. Most of their guys have all cleared. Everything looked good. And the Bulls got right back to winning. So hopefully for these teams that are going into COVID protocols can clear by Christmas and we can get some exciting games. Yeah, They recently just signed my boy Mac McClung. So I'm even more excited about I honestly wish they could just switch out the Celtics and the Bulls and have the Bulls play the Bucks. Yeah, Because I, I don't want to watch the Celtics. <laughs> Uh, their their team just the way their roster was constructed, yeah. I I don't think that eh, they just didn't do a very good job with it. Yeah. And then I wanted to bring up real quick. I know you wanted to talk about the Cavs. Third seed. <laughs> They're third in the East right now. Um, there is a big stockpile of nineteen win teams. Second through fifth, all have 19, Chicago, Cleveland, Miami, and Milwaukee. But yeah, what Cleveland is doing, and without Colin Sexton, who was their breakout player last year, is kind of incredible, to be honest. And I really don't even, I don't even know how they're necessarily getting it done. They're just getting it done. They blew out the Bucks just a few nights ago, 119 to 90. Like, they're beating good teams. And what is their win streak at? I think they won like seven in a row. Uh, six. Six? Apparently, okay. yeah. But they're eight and two in their last ten. So, like, this Cleveland team is just, it's just working. And I think it, the funny part is, like, even myself made a lot of jokes about, like, them having too many centers or power forwards, having Jared Allen getting Evan Mobley, they even traded for Laurie Markkinen, Kevin Love. Like, they just had a crowded front court, and it's worked. And obviously, they like, Darius Garland has stepped into that starting role very nicely. Ricky Rubio has been huge for them. He's playing some of the best ball of his career. Yeah. He is a candidate, I would say, right now for sixth man of the year, um, the way that he's playing. Uh like we said before, I think we said it last week, Chetty Osman is, like, being solid for this team. Like Even just, Kevin Love is heating up, like, every other game, too. Yeah, and, and he, he they don't play him a lot because they want these young guys to play. But Kevin Love, in his 20 minutes a game or whatever, is getting 15 points a night almost. Uh, so they're just getting it done on all aspects. Uh, it's I hate it, but I love it because it's not like the LeBron Cleveland anymore. But it's still Cleveland, so... I have a love hate relationship yeah, with it. It is a weird feeling. Can I tell you something? Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, you know who they remind me of? Who? It's only it's barely been a full season of them together. But what they do on defense. Evan Mobley is already one of the best like big man defenders in the league. Mm -hmm. And Jared Allen gets rid of everything that comes to the paint. Wait, can I guess who you're going to compare them to? Do it. Is it what era is it? Just tell me that. The era we grew up watching. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> if you were about to take a guess, I was. What was your first guess? It was going to be uh, Hakeem and Ralph Sampson. Oh no! Just like twin towers. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going that. Far. Not like, and I. That's why I was saying I. I know it wasn't like obviously talent wise. Those guys are Hall of Famers. But 
That's just what I was thinking. But, yeah, they remind me of Rashid and Ben. See, that's the other one that I thought you were going to go to because you gave me that look. Um, yeah, because when, when people went into the paint against them, too. Yeah. It, it, was, it was never easy. They either got fouled or they just couldn't score. Yeah. Evan, Mo- Evan Mobley is – he can guard one through five. And he makes it look easy. Mm-hmm. And him being able to switch on picks with anybody, and then if somebody beats him off the dribble, Jared Allen is just waiting to to swat it away. Mm-hmm. Like they they are like they're almost even more lethal because Ben was an insanely great defender. Rashid was a good defender. Mm-hmm. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley are both high level defenders, and they both can give you stuff on offense. Jared Allen is averaging sixteen a game right now. Mm-hmm. Evan Mobley is averaging thirteen. 13, 8, and 6 as yeah. a rookie power forward. Like, that, they are a really underrated duo right now that people aren't talking about because mm-hmm. they're Cleveland. Yeah. And Evan Mobley is a rookie, and Jared Allen just got traded away from Brooklyn, which is still one of the dumbest trades of the past 10 years. It will never make sense that they chose DeAndre Jordan over him. It killed them in the long run. Yeah. Wow. But Cleveland, there's a, they, they deserve a lot of credit for what they're doing right now. J.B. Bickerstaff. What he's doing with his team, and just he's getting the most out of everybody. Yeah, and it seems like everybody's bought in on both sides of the floor. Yeah, I agree. Nope, Cleveland looking good. Pistons are not. We're not going to talk about the Pistons now. Listen, top three pick is all that matters. I just wanted to bring it up. Young player development, top pick. Nobody cares about the the veterans. (laughs) Nobody cares. I'm just nervous. We're not getting all that much development at the moment. I don't know. That's enough. Another topic, another day. Um, it is. It is. Let's move on to the NFL. And we're going to open with the Lions. Now, we haven't had Lions talk I couldn't almost even, all year. I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> almost all year. Well, well, well yeah, we barely had Lions talk after their first win. Yeah. And that was a game winner. Yeah. And they just went and beat the best team in the league. And not only beat them, they stomped them. 30 to 12, yeah. the Lions won over the Arizona Cardinals. It still sounds weird to say. By the middle of the second quarter, it looked like it was out of reach cuz Detroit was just they just looked like the better team. Yeah. The now, entire game. You can say all you want, the Cardinals were without DeAndre Hopkins. Big deal. The Lions didn't have DeAndre Swift, their starting running back. They didn't have Jamal Williams, their second string running back. They didn't have TJ Hawkinson, their tight end. But they got it done. Craig Reynolds, Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown. I still don't, I, I don't know. It was cool to see. And I will say, Riley Patterson, they found a kicker finally. He was confidently knocking those through. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like there was no like stress or fear in him. Yes. He was just doing his job. Yep. And so that's exciting. So that helps them in a lot of scenarios that they lost earlier on in the season. Um, but they just looked good. Their offensive yeah. line looked good. Craig Reynolds had 112 yards on the ground because of it. So, so they're able to ground and pound. Jared Goff didn't he he played a dink and dunk offense, which they've been playing recently because of all the injuries and stuff. So Amon Ross St. Brown sets up a lot of things. Then it sets up for bigger plays for like Josh Reynolds with that touchdown when he just hit a little post route. And I don't know, like their defense, they just looked good with all these backup guys and people that nobody knows about. Um, My favorite defensive player, of course, Amani Awarie also got another pick. He's like third in the league for interceptions that, this that season. That was like he he made it like Pro Bowl level play. Yeah, that was a really good, really good play. Mm-hmm. So, I I kind of want to go from point to point on this. So mm-hmm. first of all, I think Craig Reynolds could be the number two back for the next few years behind DeAndre Swift, mm-hmm. or him or Jamar Jefferson. They could rotate them. Yeah, but Craig Reynolds. He he's got something. Yeah. And he's a tough back too, which is like what they need besides DeAndre Swift. Now Jamal Williams was supposed to be that somewhat. 
but he's been banged up a lot, hasn't played a lot this season, which is disappointing. Um, but yeah, if you if you can get somebody like Craig Reynolds, who's just this young guy and just fights for every yard, like dude out of cuts town. Yeah, it's a good yeah, it's a good cuts town. It's a good duo to have. His uh, vision, some of those plays where he like the play where he got stopped on the backfield, spun around, and still got a first down. Mm-hmm. He every drive he had one of those runs where you were just like. Where where did this guy come from? Yeah. He's wearing number 46, first of all. Yep. He's wearing 46. He's breaking these tackles. He's making these plays. Mm-hmm. And he's just keeping drives going. Yeah. And then, like, just random, kind of random guys, I guess. Like, Charles Harris, the Lions picked up off of waivers, I believe, recently. Um, Had a sack and a half, and... Like he was a former first round pick, I believe, by Miami. Um and he's just played so good for the Lions this season. Uh Jalen Reeves Maven got to the uh quarterback a few times, deflected some passes, like they just looked good. And they're with all these guys that nobody really knows who they are. I've been waiting all season to see him on St. Brown for them to Target him, throw yeah. him the ball like they have the past few weeks. Yeah. Why do you think it's taking this long? Yeah. And I and I'll agree with some people, like he's he's probably not like the most talented receiver necessarily. He is a to me, he's a dependable number two. Exactly. He's, he's a just, very dependable number two. Yeah, he just gets it done and he's like that perfect kind of slot short route guy that can get a few extra yards here and there. And yeah, he's just a solid guy to go to, like a surefire option. He gets open on deep routes too, because he's yeah. he's he's got some speed. He can get past you when you least expect right. it. Right. I would say he doesn't he doesn't do anything exceptionally, but he does everything really good. Yeah. Uh, which is an important part for, like you said, kind of a wide receiver too. He's, he's not the wide receiver one, obviously, but like he's just a productive receiver for this team. And I think like they're finally, unfortunately, it took all these injuries to figure it out, but they're starting to use him, and it's it's working really well, and it's it's really nice to see. And again. The Josh Reynolds pickup seems to be big because he has a repertoire with Jared Goff in the past, so they've been able to hit each other on deep routes. So I don't know. It, it the Lions could lose the rest of the games this season. That was just the f- most fun win they've had in a while. Yeah, this this is the type of game they needed. Yeah. To to get to make sh- like sh- to show the fan base that there is. There are bright spots. Mm-hmm. There are some things to believe in. And Dan Campbell gets the best out of his guys. Right. He's getting the most out of everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, next point. For the first time in Lions history, maybe, you have a fantastic O-line, and the rest of the team is building. Yeah. And this is exactly what I've said for like the past year with the Lions. This is what they need to try to do build out the rest of the team, and then try to find the stud quarterback mm-hmm. so that there, there doesn't have to be a rough transition right? or you just rip the guy's confidence apart and it just never happens. Right. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you feel seeing a good Lions O-line? It's like good. Uh, uh, like they, the holes they were yeah. creating for – It's a good yeah. feeling, and they're only going to get better, which is nice to know. Um, yeah. It does feel like there is a positive future. Now, I'm not going to say that this, like, amends all of Dan Campbell's shortcomings in the last few weeks. It doesn't. But I do think that it solidifies that he'll be back at least next year, um, which I think is okay. I don't think it it's a big deal to bring him back. I think you still need another year to figure things out. Um, uh, the one thing that people are now upset about is they lose the number one pick. They can still get it, um, but it's a lot harder now. I and, mean, you, you can still get Thibodeau or Hutchinson. Yeah. If, if you have the number two pick, whoever falls to you, right? you got him. I was going to say, at this point, it's similar to, like, Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green. Like, the constellation is not much worse than the number one overall pick. And, like, a lot of people have brought up this, this week because of that. The Lions got Penny Sewell later than they thought. So they thought they won the draft when in actuality, 
the Dallas Cowboys won the draft at pick 11 and taking Micah Parsons, who might be the, the defensive, defensive player, of the, player year of the year and rookie of the year. So you just never know, like especially when there's not a, a quarterback in a draft that is like that number one guy. And the Lions just need to fill it out with whoever they want, honestly. Like the best defensive player that they think is available, I'm okay with them taking. Yeah, Cowboys fans were upset at the time that they weren't going to get Pat Sertan. Yeah. And they ended up with an absolute monster. Yeah. So, last question. Okay. Would you, after this win and seeing the improvements of the team all around, would you still go defensive end first, receiver second in the first round with those picks? This is before knowing if they trade up or trade down. Would you go defensive end with that first or second pick, receiver, Late first round. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but like I've said before, I, I don't even mind if they went like defense, defense in this draft, depending on where things fall. Um, it kind of just depends. And then, like we've talked about before, maybe depending on how things work out, you could maybe look at like, nah, I don't even want to think quarterback actually. Because they, they could, they could pass up quarterback this year. Yeah. They re- they really could. I I hope they do. Um, like uh, unless Malik unless Malik Willis dropped to like the third or fourth right, round, yeah. Then it would be like, oh, he's still there. Yeah, take him. I, I yeah. agree with that. I think he's the only one that you would take a, a gamble on it, and only if he fell. Um, because I would much rather yes get a defense and wide receiver, or like I said, I'd be okay with defense defense. Um, I do think wide receiver is a need, and there is a good amount of receivers that if somebody maybe falls and is there, uh, depending on where that pick lands, would be nice. Yeah. I'm just a little nervous those top receivers are going to go just before the Lions get there. And I don't want them to reach for a receiver just because it's a, a feeling of need. Um, because, again, next year isn't going to be that year where the Lions break out and make the playoffs. Uh, they're still going to be in another growth period. So I just need to see improvement. Understandable. But either way. So it, how it, would you grade this win? Oh, A plus, hundred percent. They were <laughs> I down, didn't doubt it. <laughs> down a lot of players. They showed just they they just showed heart in that game, which was cool to see. Um, and like stop stifling an Arizona offense that's been one of the best offenses in the league all year, even without DeAndre Hopkins, because right. they still have firepower. Yeah, you still have Kyler Murray, Christian Kirk is solid, AJ Green is solid, Zach Ertz. They got two running backs, James yeah. Conner and Chase Edmonds. Like, they just shut everybody down, which was cool to see. Big win for the Lions. They don't need to win any more games this year. I'm satisfied, to be honest. That's honestly that's how it should go. Yeah. Just just finish with the, would it be two sixteen what two sixteen and one two fifteen and one two fifteen how, and one. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. so weird. <laughs> yeah, two fifteen. Especially and with one. that extra game. Yeah. All righty. So with that, we got some Lions talk in. Let's get to the picks. I did beat Malik last week. I won 11-8. to eight. He's coming back. It could have been a bigger win, but Major comeback. Malik got some of those postponed games right, which hurt me a little bit. But a win is a win. I'm now within 10 with three weeks to go in the regular season. So there is a chance, but I need to make some big There's moves right now. This is the time. Are, are you confident? I'm a little bit confident, actually. A little see. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> A little confident. You need to be all in. I'm not fully that's, confident. That's how you win. You have to be all in. Mm-hmm. We'll see. San Francisco at Tennessee on Thursday night. Two teams that... Uh, San Francisco's trending in the right direction. Tennessee's just a... Tennessee without, is... Without Derrick Henry, you really can't, like... Yeah. They've been playing all right, but they, like... I don't know. They shoot themselves in the foot like they were beating Pittsburgh all game and then they just lose. I like, haven't watched them since Derrick Henry got hurt. So Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, but I've seen they've won a few games. But that loss to the Steelers, that's that just bad. just giving them that game. Mm-hmm. I, the I just one, don't understand. The one nice thing for them in this game is I believe A.J. Brown is eligible to return from IR. Unsure if he will or not, but it's possible. So that could give them a little bit of a lift. Either way, I can't vote against San Francisco right now the way that they're playing. They just look good. So I'm going San Francisco. Last four Titans games, they lost to the Texans. That one was ugly. On November 21st. The Patriots beat them 36-13 to the next game. Mm -hmm. You beat the Jaguars. Congratulations. Their coach is gone. Yep. 
and then you give the Steelers a win. That's an ugly one in three. Yeah. 49ers. Good call. Christmas Day, Cleveland at Green Bay. Cleveland supposedly. Nick Mullins almost got him a win. I knew that, you know, I, I thought that he would be solid. So I I didn't think that he would be that bad. Um, they just kind of came up short. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, upsetting for Cleveland fans, but it's funny for me because they went from having a chance to be first in the AFC uh, division, whatever they're in, AFC North, um, and they're now last in that division. That's how tight that division is. And now they get to play Green Bay on Christmas, and Green Bay is just rolling recently. Cleveland, however, had a lot of COVID issues last week. This week, they should be cleared up for the most part, I believe. Um, so they'll be at full strength. Should be a pretty good one. Oh, do I want to pick Cleveland in this one? Not really. I want to pick Green Bay. I don't feel confident enough in this one. I couldn't confidently take Cleveland either. No matter who the quarterback was, Baker, Case, Nick. Yeah. yeah give, give me 12. Indianapolis at Arizona. This is a good one. This is a good one because Arizona yeah. is definitely wanting to bounce back after last week, but they have to face Jonathan Taylor. Can I pick first? Go ahead. Indianapolis, they, they seem to have a little bit of something. It's a, it's like 80% Jonathan Taylor, mm-hmm. but – Carson Wentz is doing just enough. That defense is getting back to where people thought they would be. The receivers make plays when they have to. They they just they they squeak out these wins. And they do just enough. And I don't know if Kyler is completely back yet cuz against Detroit he he was looking flustered. Mm-hmm. They were getting in his head a little. He's making questionable passes. And I think the Colts continue that. Give me Indy. And I'm going to go with Arizona because I think this is a good enough 50-50 game. I think people are going to doubt the Cardinals after they lost to the the Lions. I can't blame them. But I think this is a bounce-back game. I think Arizona has a chance to go crazy. Uh, Indianapolis defense is actually really good. And they're going to try to slow the game on Arizona. But I think think they're going to try to do some stuff this game because they're just upset that they lost to the Lions last week. So I'm going with Arizona. Detroit at Atlanta. Wow. Hey, Can did, the Lions do, do it you back believe, to back? Do you believe? Are you part of the pride? Do you want to pick first? <laughs> you don't sound very confident, Joey. I'm actually not. I think this could be a huge Matt Ryan game for some reason. I think you should pick first. Okay, I'll pick Atlanta. Okay. Picking Atlanta. I just think the Lions are going to do exactly the opposite of the Cardinals. The Lions are going to be all fired up. They're going to be ready. They're going to maybe look good for like a quarter, and then they're going to go back to being the Lions. But I'm, that's okay because they beat the Cardinals. So I'm going the Falcons. I'm picking Detroit. That's how it goes. <laughs> See, Watch that Detroit one. win this week. Exactly. And so if that <laughs> happens, then I just win either way. It's fine. We get a Lions win. <laughs> See? Brain. Listen, mind games. Uh, you think you, <laughs> you're playing mind games against you, not against me. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Baltimore at Cincinnati. This is a huge game for playoff implications. I'm not even going to go second thought on this. I'm going Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah. Good, because I'm going Baltimore because Lamar Jackson is coming back. He's going to lead the Ravens, and they're going to take over the AFC North. Is he going to lead them in rushing and passing? He might. Well, he'll lead them in passing for sure, but probably in rushing too. Rams at the Vikings. Vikings, uh, they didn't look so good last week against the Bears, even though they squeaked, squeaked out the win. Rams. Kirk oh. Cousins threw one of the worst picks I've ever seen. Yeah. Where he just lofted it up to the, just yeah, just put it up there for the safety. And we have to take a quick moment to just appreciate Cooper Cup and the season that he's having. Un- <laughs> well, it's insane. He might be the first receiver to win the Triple Crown since Steve Smith. And I think 2005. Yeah. He is averaging 100, like 100 yards and a touchdown per game. It's stupid. Per it's game. absolutely stupid. It's incredible. And for that simple fact, I have to go with the Rams. 
because you can't be stopped. I'm afraid this is one of those Kirk Cousins games. It could be. Because this, this, is, this is what he does. They have a, a load of weapons. It is hard to go against the Vikings. but They got Von Miller back, though. Mm-hmm. And they got Aaron Donald. And that Rams defense gave Russell Wilson absolute problems last night. So I'm going Rams. Yeah. Buffalo at New England. Can your boy do it again against Buffalo? Can he do it again? Hey, it's in New England. Those fans are going to be excited. And I want you to pick first. I'm picking Buffalo. Okay. There's no chance. Okay. Th- these are perfectly good weather conditions. Both teams play in cold weather, but it's not that crazy windstorm that they were in the last time they played. Mac Jones only threw the ball three times. He's going to have to do it more. And I think Josh Allen is going to have a big game in this one. You know uh, who I trust? Somehow. I trust J.C. Jackson. Yeah. Their defense is scary. I, I trust those playmakers. Those guys that don't make many mistakes. Give me the Patriots. I will give you that. Jacksonville at the Jets. Here we go. Bottom of the barrel. Can Trevor Lawrence's confidence go up with that absolute abomination of a coach out? <laughs> They looked better last week. They gave the ball to James Robinson. They established a run. And then the Jets are also a weird team. Like, they've they've looked pretty decent at times. They, and then they also, yeah. They were beating the Dolphins for most of the game, and then all of a sudden the Dolphins realized, hey, we're playing the Jets. We should play a little harder. Yeah. And they did that, and they won the game. So, ooh, that's a rough one. Two rookie quarterbacks slinging it. Yeah. There will be picks. There will be mistakes. Mm-hmm. There will be blood, sweat, and tears on that field. And the Jacksonville pick? Jaguars will get their third win. Okay. Good. Because Jets just, fans will be upset after just, this one. I'm just going to go with the opposite because this one is a coin flip. New York Giants at the Eagles. I finally got hey, an Eagles pick right. Jalen Hurts. He looked good. He was he was showing some stuff in that game. He was Miles tough. Sanders looked good. They finally gave him the ball a yeah. lot. They ran, they ran some option stuff. They they, mm-hmm. they got creative out there. Yeah, and their Sir, offensive yeah. line looked good. Sirianni has a decent team. Yeah, as long as he's just, people expected. If if he just sticks to his game plan, it seems like he changes things up too much. Tries to change things up too often. And then the Giants, they're about to start Jake Fromm. Now he could be better, <laughs> I guess, but it's they're yeah. still the Giants. They're a mess. I don't know what's going on. It. I feel bad because they've tried to make all these moves. Saquon's actually been pretty healthy for the most part. Uh, they're just becoming the Giants. Fly, Eagles, fly. Yeah. I can't even go against that one. Tampa Bay at Carolina. Tampa Bay, they're having some injury issues all of a sudden. Big time. Injury Uncle issue. Lenny going to be on the IR. You lose Godwin for the year, torn ACL. Mm-hmm. They announced today Leonard Fournette is out for the season. Oh, he is? Yes. Oh, I saw he was just on the IR. I, I thought today I saw they announced he's out for the season. Wow. Mike, I, I don't know how long Mike Evans is out. He's supposedly week to week. Okay. So there's a chance he can play this Sunday, but I wouldn't bet on it uh, because they are already in the playoffs. So I, I'm sure they want to keep people healthy now with Godwin out. So I'm still going to pick the Bucks. Yeah. You just can't trust the, the Panthers in their quarterback situation right now. You yeah, just can't. The, the Panthers are just – they had so much hope early on in the season. They made all these moves for defense. Remember that Sam Darnold MVP type? Yeah. The, the, those first Two four games. weeks? Yeah, jeez. That is a time capsule if I've ever seen one before. And then you Sam remember, Darnold MVP. You remember the hype of Cam Newton coming back? Yes. That lasted a week. I'm back. He screamed it. And then stuff hit the fan real fast. Man. Any, in any other circumstance, I would have thought that like this would be a – game that I could pick Carolina, but I just can't. It's been it's been a real strange season for Carolina. Yeah. Like once the season ends, you have more questions than answers. Like even more questions than when you started the season. Yeah. It, it's just all over the place. Chargers at Houston. Chargers. I can't. Davis Mills looked Davis Mills has been looking solid lately. Yeah, I'm just scared. He has better stats than Trevor Lawrence and Zach yeah. Wilson. I'm just scared he goes back to being Davis Mills, though. That is incredible. He's, like, he's had some like good games, and then he's had some bad games. Rex Burkhead is their leading rusher with 207 yards. Yeah. How does that happen? Because uh, they're I'm, I, I don't. 
I don't understand. They've been using old. Oh, they traded. They traded Mark Ingram. He was yeah. their leading rusher. David Johnson's David had jo- been in and out. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor fourth. Le- okay, I'm just gonna get. Yeah. yeah. They got rid of Philip Lindsay too. Yeah, Chargers. <laughs> yeah. I'll make it easy for you. Chicago at Seattle. This one could be actually kind of interesting. Seattle has looked bad. At the end of the game, it's like they drew up the game plan for Justin Fields at the last minute. Yeah. All of a sudden, they he just got just into a zone. Taking it down the field. He was hitting everything. It, like yeah. Everything was just making sense all of a sudden. Yeah. Which shows you still can't trust the Chicago Bears. Yeah. But the Seahawks are just, they're just so cooked. Yeah, these are they two are teams so that are shambles. Cooked. Chicago probably could have beat the Vikings if they didn't have so many penalties on themselves that stopped them from scoring and also helped Minnesota get into scoring position more often. I'm just going to go with the Bears. I feel like Russ in Seattle is done. I feel like they should get rid of They need to start over. Yeah. They just need to start over. Man, I wanted to pick the Bears, but I guess I got to pick Seattle because this is another coin flip game. This yeah. one could be ugly. But... Maybe they should sign Huntley and just take a few years and try to figure things out. Yeah. We'll see. Pittsburgh at Kansas City. Kansas City has a lot of COVID issues right now. Tyreek Hill is going to possibly out. Travis Kelsey possibly out. Oof. But Pittsburgh, man. They're, these wins, they they have wins that should They're not They're doing have exactly happened. what they did last year. They won on this easy schedule. They're doing it again this year. But well, they this can isn't win the same because they they look like the best team in the league for like the first like ten games. Yeah, and then they turn into their regular selves. You just can't trust the Steelers team, even with know. Kansas City's problems. I'm still yeah. going to take Kansas City. I'm, I'm still doing it. And unfortunately, I think this is a spot where I actually have to take Pittsburgh, and it feels bad to do it. But I think because and and watch, I'm sure Kansas City will be healthy by the time they actually play, um, or the game will get moved to Monday night or something like that. But I'm just going to go with Pittsburgh at the off chance that these guys can't play, and we'll see what happens. Denver at Oakland, two you know teams who I'm taking. that have had a weird season. You're taking Oakland. You right? know who I'm taking. You're not taking Drew Oakland. Who, taking. who are the Oakland Raiders? Who who who's that? Well, you know who who is there. You there's know, a football team in Oakland. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know there's a football team in in Los Angeles, the Chargers. Oh my gosh! Okay, and the, the Rams. Vegas Raiders. <laughs> The Raiders. Who are you taking? <sighs> Shouts out to Teddy Bridgewater for uh, making it through that tough scene. They carted him off the field. Apparently, it was just a concussion. Yeah. His luck has just been so weird in the NFL. I'm taking Denver. Drew Lock Express? That's what we're doing? Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. That's all I got Drew Lock Express? That's all I got for you. Javante oh Williams and Mel- Melvin Gordon plus oh their defense. That's all I got. I got to take some Listen. chances. You're yeah, you're you're right. You are right. You do have to take some chances. Washington at Dallas Sunday night. Now will you take this chance? No. <laughs> as bad as like Dallas has looked on offense, Washington like they had a couple games where they were looking good. Then they have had their COVID issues. They looked really bad last night against uh, Philadelphia. I-, I don't know, but I have to go Dallas. I I'll go Dallas also. Even though yeah. Dak has not looked that great recently, it's I don't know. Dallas just is getting it done. And Monday night, Miami at New Orleans. That New Orleans defense is going to pressure Tua so much that they're going to lose. Listen, there are some people that call him Tua, turn the ball over. That's a good one. And I don't agree because I still like Tua. He's a young quarterback. They're gonna He's going to make mistakes. But New Orleans, man. They're, they're going to be all They over shut them. out Tom Brady for the first time in his career. They are going to be all over Tua. New Orleans, man. Good, because I'm going to go with Miami. I think New I'd Orleans. I'd be happy if, if Miami won. I think New Orleans. Orleans has been a little bit spotty. I, I do think their defense can be top tier, but I think at times they gave up a lot of stuff too. So I'm hoping that Miami can figure it out. Jalen Waddell, Devontae Parker. And Miami's been figuring things out on defense, so they could make Taysom Hill uncomfortable. He didn't play that good last week. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go with Miami. And this that, could be a week where I separate or yeah, get it could a little be, bit closer. It could be night-night for me, or I could actually make it back into the team, uh, into the game. Either way, this has been Views from the Sidelines. Happy holidays, everyone. We will see you guys next time. What are you doing for Christmas, Joe? Watching sports. Let's
going to be a beautiful Christmas. And Earth.